Hey, you. Yeah, you. In case you hadn't heard, your favorite renegade sports media group has its own Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media to support our efforts to continuously bring you sports, gaming, and other media coverage as only we can. We've got four different membership tiers. For $3 a month, we'll give you a simple thank you on our Patreon site. For $6 a month, you get a thank you and you get to become a recruit in Jackson Law's Vendetta University Gaming Series. For $10 a month, you get everything from the previous tiers, a special thank you at the end of our videos, free access to our upcoming Discord chat, and a free koozie after four months, and then the big dog. $50 a month gets you everything from the previous tiers, as well as opportunities for Fantasy League invites, stream gaming, possible invites to mock NFL and NBA draft sessions, a once a month Google Hangout, and after four months, a free t-shirt. Yeah! Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media and help us to improve our pledge to bring you the best sports, gaming, and other media coverage. What's going on, Tanimals? It's another fantabulous edition of the Tandemonium Sports Show here on Vendetta Sports Media. Make sure if you're checking us out here on YouTube, we appreciate it. Just click the little bell icon at the bottom. And once you click the bell icon, you can either choose to want notification of all of our videos or just occasional videos, but make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out all of our content at vendettasportsmedia.com. And I think that's about all that I've got right now. I'm sure I'll sell more crap later, but with me as <laughs> always, co-host of the stars, the Kung Lao to my Liu Kang, Jackson Law. J-Law, how the hell are you? Uh, spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't seen uh, the Mortal Kombat movie, movie but uh, better than Kung Lao is <laughs> my boy Kung Lao got done dirty in that movie, man. Dude, Kung oh, Lao got God. the awesomest fatality, though. He, he he did, but I love Kung Lao. Whoa, I, I use Jax Kung Lao a lot. Done, Jax got done way dirtier than Kung Lao did, at least at the beginning. At the beginning, he did, yeah. But, I mean, it's all about the setup. Like, Ajax is is set up for a really great, you know, second movie, you know, and everything that they got going on. But, man. <laughs> and, Our, and, you know, <laughs> my boy, just Kung Lao, man. I was so sad. When, when that happened, I was with my wife watching it. And I was just, <laughs> I was so sad. Meanwhile, I was like, Jax! Jax! But it's like, but you are going up against Bihan, man. B Bihan don't play no games. Yeah, and it is cool what they did with like his origin now too. Yeah, like I kind of like that's it's a cool tie-in. It's it's an extra layer. The, the whole lot. I mean, honestly, I, I said this on my personal Facebook. You know what? I don't care if folks don't like it. Your excuses for why you don't like it don't compute with me. It's better than I loved it. it's better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation was. So count your blessings and shut your hole. All right. Yep. Is it as good as the '95 Mortal Kombat? Yes, and better. Why? Because 95 Mortal Kombat wasted a ton of money on bad CGI, and it was a product of the time. And as much as I love Christopher Lambert, he is not rating. As much as I love James Raymer, he is not rating. So, yeah. And with us, as all with us, coming in with us again during the hockey season, I guess she's our, ver our own version of a Sonya Blade, Emma Brown. Emma, what's going on? Um, nothing there you much. Go. How are you? Uh, another day in paradise, living the dream. Got both of my arms, so I'm not going to complain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the, so let's continue on the bloodline of um of Hanzo Hanchi, and um, let's talk some NHL. Um, first of all, I definitely I want to talk some Tim Thomas with you, um, Emma. But mm -hmm. first, let's talk this Turner Sports seven year deal with the NHL. I mean, this is big. This is big because. Turner Sports, when it comes to sports, they're you know that they, they tend to have stayed away from hockey traditionally. It's been the Atlanta Hawks and it's been the Atlanta Braves, but now they're getting into the hockey business. What can you tell us? He froze again. I froze. <laughs> Come on, it's man. not my internet. Uh, and you it's know not what? Not my internet. 
What really sucks is that I, I have most everything like shut down and everything and I still freeze. At least it's at the very beginning. So what, what can you tell us about what's going on with this um, Turner deal? Because, you know, as I said, in, in case I, if I froze and everyone missed it, Turner, Turner Sports has been primarily baseball and basketball. They, they've stayed away from, you know, football and hockey. So I mean, what can you tell every, us? Everybody's kind of stayed away from hockey for a really long time. Um, ESPN also signed a seven-year deal with the NHL. Um, and I think it's like, part of me is like, yeah, no, it's really cool. Like expanding the league, building the audience, but at the same time, like Turner sports and TNT. So it's a seven year deal and ESPN's is a seven year deal also. And so, um, TNT will air three Stanley cup finals and then ESPN will do the other four. And I guess they're like trading off. I'm not really sure. Um, but like, part of me is like yeah super cool expanding the audience and then the other part is like tnt is exclusively cable right and if you're really trying to expand the audience you're gonna make it available to everyone not just people with cable and like yeah it just it kind of annoys me because it's not actually about expanding the audience it's about making the most money you possibly can and it's not about and it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way because I'll tell you the truth. I remember when I could watch Penguins games on network TV. Can't do that anymore, especially now, you know, NH the NHL 16-year relationship with NBC is over, which means there goes, you know, basic cable viewing right there. If it's all going to be on ESPN and TNT, yeah, so now the only way that I can ca a casual fan like me can watch the games, or is if I go to a bar, which I don't do, and bars are still closed. So I guess I gotta listen to it on my boombox. So I've also yeah, seen or, or or unless like you pay for an extra streaming service in like a uh, uh, Sling or something like that, because yeah, because Sling you can get TNT, you can get ESPN, but. But still. Now, but yeah, but not so now you yeah, but now you still gotta buy yet another subscription service, or if you've got Dish, or whatever other like cable TV stuff, well, I guess you you probably don't have to you know buy sports packages anymore. Well, even then, there's still like owners like in Colorado. So Stan Kroenke owns the Abs and the Nuggets, and he is fighting with like Dish and a bunch of other TV providers because they won't give him enough money hmm. to air. So like, yeah, and then it, like there's the the networks and then there's the individual owners and it's just, it's not about the sport. It's about who can make the most money. Yeah, there's, there's, there's something similar going on uh, with the NBA because NBA local stations have done a complete rebranding. They used to be uh, Fox Sports and then whatever the region you were. So for instance, when I would watch Grizzlies games, I watched on Fox Sports Southeast. Now they're Bali sports or something like that. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of stupid really, but you used to be able to watch all of that, you know, like you could watch it on YouTube TV if you had YouTube TV and you used to be able to access it on all the streaming services. Well, you can't now because uh, Bali sports, whoever owns them, I don't know if it's still Fox that owns them or if it's a completely new company or they have a bunch of rebranding uh, is paying a bunch of extra money to not allow for someone like me, instead of paying, you know, 80 bucks for a cable um, bill, if I wanted to pay the 15 bucks a month that it was for YouTube TV, I can't watch those games on YouTube TV anymore. I have to have a cable subscription or I have to do what I do now, which is have a one team league pass on NBA league pass and then use a VPN to get around blackout restrictions. See, that sucks. Like, well, here's here's another thing that I'm looking in. And shout out to uh, Bridget 12 Rounds, who's our final show. We'll talk to her in a little while as well. Here's another thing. Now, ESPN and the NHL have announced their seven-year deal, as you said, Emma. This is back in March. Yeah. Um, first time that hockey will be on ESPN since 2004. I don't know how you let that happen. But now, 25 regular season games on ESPN or ABC. So, all right, so maybe we'll get some regular TV on there as well. But now, more than 1,000 games per season – is going to be streaming on ESPN Plus. 
So ESPN Plus and Hulu will have telecast, um, exclusive telecast um, options. So, I mean, yeah, that's kind of cool. But at the end of the day, I, I, I agree with you 100%, Emma. It's like, but you're not expanding the league if people on regular cable, basic cable, or have the antenna can't watch your games. It's not about hockey. Like, it's about hockey to the coaches and the players. But as soon as you get above that in the rankings, it's about who can make the most money. Right. And, and that's, that, that, that just, it, it doesn't work for me. It, it really doesn't. I mean, but the thing is, is that this is, this is becoming the norm, essentially. The only sport that doesn't really do this is um, the NFL, right? You, you, can, you can watch any team on CBS and blah, blah, blah. And if you have CBS access, you can watch whatever. I mean, because even, even the NBA, I mean, I'll grant it, the NBA does get shown on, uh, I believe they're on ABC, if I recall correctly, Jackson. Say that again. I said I believe Come. the I believe that um the NBA at least gets to be on ABC more often than not because I know they're on TNT, but they're also yeah, on ESPN uh, yeah, and the, ABC. Yeah, yeah, the primetime games. So yeah, because of because of Disney's owning of ESPN and ABC, they kind of get mushed together. So when you've got when you got big primetime games like um like if the Lakers are playing the Clippers or something like that in a primetime slot on a night where there's no other sports, they'll slap it on ABC. And you know what's crazy about this whole um, NHL deal is it's also going to affect the programming on TNT because now AEW's programming has to switch nights. And there's hockey games like three. All the time. Yeah, there's hockey games every night. Each team plays like two, three games a week. This season they're playing like back to back. Right. So that means now that AEW now has to make a serious decision on what they're going to do, you know, with their TV deal. And I'm not 100% sure how long their TV deal with um, TNT is, but they might have to switch networks. They might have to go to um, TBS if they're going to stay with Turner or who knows. Oh yeah, and of course, shout out to the, my uh, my wife's cameo on the show. She brings me my tea because I'm dragging <laughs> ass. <laughs> but yeah, th- this is th- this. I think it just goes to show once again, man. This is this is capitalism at its worst, man. I'm, I'm, they're I'm not just expanding say the audience; they're shifting it. <laughs> right, they're they're shifting it to the people that can afford the the cable and mm-hmm. afford the extra streaming subscriptions, and that's about it. And otherwise. This is just going to start pushing folks to every other sport ever. Everything else, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's crazy that you've got of the four major North American sports: NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL. And NHL is always, if you look at any list of those, like for anything, NHL is always dead last. In the and that's a, and that's crazy because you know it goes NHL, MLB, NBA, and then NFL, and. The only one that's only one of the four that's really expanding and growing is the NBA. In the next 10 years, the NBA is going to overtake the NFL as the top sport in North America. I'm calling it now. By the time I'm in my 50s, that's going to happen because the NBA has exploded so much from the 70s to now. In the NHL, man, if they're not careful... (laughs) <laughs> NHL is going to have to merge with the MLB and now we're going to have to have inner sport play. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how you can make that work. I know baseball and football at least work a little bit better yeah. in that. And, and NHL needs to watch out because soccer is starting to become incredibly popular teams or, or cities are starting to get uh, soccer and soccer clubs. Like Memphis has one and it's done so well in Memphis that there's talk about the club moving up a level, not to MLS, but basically the one right underneath MLS. They're kind of like, they would be the equivalent. If, if you looked at it like baseball wise and you had double AA, a triple a MLB, they're kind of like a double a team right. right now. 
Well, that's just like here in Pittsburgh, man. The Pittsburgh Riverhounds are starting to gain some uh, popularity as well. So you never know, man. All right, so real quick before we let you uh, go, Emma, what's going on with uh, Tim Thomas? Tim Thomas cut hockey out of his life completely for the last seven years. What do you know? Um, so there's not really a lot of information about it right now because he has only had like two public appearances in the last seven years. Um, it was a very big like mental health thing. So he was um, a goalie for the Bruins. Um, I think he was drafted in 2006-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and he played with the Bruins until 2012. And then he took a season off. And then his last season, he spent split between Dallas and Florida. Um, and in 2011, um, the Bruins won the cup. Um, and this year is like the 10 year anniversary and he's um, like coming out and he's speaking about like the concussions that he got as a goalie and how it like led to brain damage and, and mental health issues and stuff. And like he hated hockey and he never wanted to talk about it and never wanted to see it. And he talks to like one person who's on the Bruins, um, who was on the Bruins when he won the cup. Um, yeah, and his first public appearance was in 2019 after he got inducted into the U.S. Um, Hockey Hall of Fame. Um, he just dropped a puck at a Bruins Capitals game, and that was like the first time anybody had really seen him since he won the cup or since he retired. Wow. Um, and I guess he's doing something with NFTs. I don't know anything about NFTs. Oh, or that like makes that sense. Anything. So, um, but yeah. Um, he had a Zoom interview with The Athletic, I think, like two, a week and a half or a week ago. And he's like, yeah, I'm ready to start talking about it a little bit and like casually talking about hockey, but I'm not all the way ready to be like Back. 100% in the public eye. So he, he's not John Wick level. He, he's he's not doing the John Wick yeah, I guess I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> no, like, no, no one's killed his dog with a hockey puck yet. No. <laughs> let's hope let's let's hope to God that doesn't happen because he's like just dipping his- killed killed 30 men with half a hockey stick. <laughs> broken broken hockey stick just like breaks it in half and just starts. Every time I watch Gosh, John every great. time I watch John Wick <laughs> and Theon Greyjoy kills his dog, <laughs> I cry. It's like, man. F you, unit castrated I just, son. I bitch. just, I just love how he thinks he's being a badass, and then literally he's bragging about killing John Wick's dog, and everyone's like, "What's wrong with you? Why right. did you do that?" And then it's like, <laughs> "Why he, would you provoke yeah, like, the man?" Like, like seriously, like even his dad gives him expensive vodka and then punches him in the stomach just so he'll puke it up. Like, yeah. it's not about. And, and what's worse yet is that he goes, "It's not what you did." It's who you did it to do. So if he yeah. would have killed Joe Schmo's dog, you'd be cool with that. Monster. Yeah, but no. Monster. But <laughs> I digress. You know, good for Tim Thomas, though, because mental health and brain injuries, you know, as someone who's dealt with brain injuries myself, I've had multiple concussions from combat sports and playing um, um, football. That's no joke, man. It is no joke. And it takes a long time to get yourself back to who you were. And the NHL, their like big thing because is like playing through injuries and like just toughing it out. And like, oh my God, the, N- the NHL is horrible with that. I, I remember mm-hmm. seeing memes and NHL fans are the ones that really piss me off about that because they'll sit there and they'll talk about, oh, this guy got his finger hit and it exploded in his glove and he kept playing. But LeBron James twists his ankle and he doesn't play. It's like, listen here, Spartacus. Why don't we twist your ankle and see if you're still up for playing? I'm Spartacus. (laughs) Oh, I'm Spartacus. Yeah, the NHL. I have. I know old movies too, Brian. I have some issues with the NHL, but what am I going to do when I get off of here? Go watch three hockey games at once. Well, there you go. I mean, hey, there's nothing. Hey, when I get off of here, I'm probably not only am I going to work out, but I'm going to finish watching Mighty Ducks three. There you go. <laughs> so there you go. So yeah, I do love this. I love the sport of hockey. It's just the NHL just bothers me in a lot Gary of Gary Bettman so, bothers me. He's the commissioner. He bothers me. So so who bothers you more, Gary Bettman or um um Manford from MLB? Who do you who do you despise more? Who does Emma Brown? Well, I don't watch baseball. 
So oh. I have to go with five foot seven, one hundred and eight year old Gary Bettman. Fair enough. <laughs> let, let, let's let's hit him with a um with a hockey puck. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's have Fulton Reed give him a <laughs> slap shot to the balls. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm excited for this upcoming episode of um, Mighty Ducks Game Changers because the original Ducks are going to be in this episode. So I'm kind of pumped to see um, Froggy Nelson show up. And it's like, we're supposed to remember that you're this big, monstrous, intimidating 12-year-old when you're the same size at 40-something as you were when you were like 12. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I'm serious. Like, I remember watching the Mighty Ducks and Fulton Reed was like this big like monster and he's the exact same size as an adult <laughs> as he was then it's like god just gave you all this size as a kid and then it's just like <laughs> and you're done you had one year of pre- puberty that's it that's all you get <laughs> he didn't get to grow or nothing it's just like well <laughs> sorry friend <laughs> oh all right is there, is there anything else nhl related that you want to you want to bring up before we uh, let you go watch some hockey tonight there, Emma Brown? Um, I mean, the regular season's almost done. Playoffs start second week of May. Um, yeah. So who, who, who do you think, who do you think's coming out? Of, who do you think's um, going to be in the uh, Lord Stanley's, um, his um, challenge, if you will? Who, who, who's going who's gonna to be, who's going to be in the Stanley Cup this year? Give me a break. Like prediction. the final, final? Yeah. Who, who's going to be in the final? Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Lightning and the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, okay. As long as the Avs don't play like they've been playing for the last three games. All right. So we're, we're going to have to have you and Andrew come on, right. Um, was it not, not next week, but the week after have you guys start talking playoffs. I think we're probably going to end up doing a lot of playoff hockey talk on um, Jackson Law in two weeks. I think I think I think that episode is just going to be all hockey talk. I think, and maybe since since um since um Trey is you know gung ho about the NHL right now, I guess we're going to have to bring him in there as yeah, well. Yeah, hockey guy hockey. Trey, hockey guy Trey, <laughs> Trey the hockey guy Dobber. <laughs> all right, so yeah, in two weeks we're going to have the Tandemonium Sports Show is going to be just hockey. That means that Jackson and I are just going to sit here and nod. While Emma, just, Andrew, and Trey do all the talk. I'll just make me like, you know, you know, like some ramen or something. I'll just sit here and I'll I'll eat my supper. <laughs> just sit back, mute my mic, listen in, have a good time. <laughs> Be here so that way I don't get fined, you know. You know there you goes. go. There you go. Um, Emma, it's always amazing to have you on. We'll see you in two weeks. Cannot wait. I know you're going to have some good stuff coming at us. And um, we definitely want to hear more of your hate about the uh, the NHL um, commissioner and their capitalist gains. <laughs> I will talk about that forever. <laughs> nice. Emma Brown, folks. Um, so with that being said, we're going to have yet another special guest come in. We're going to bring in Chad. And we're going to talk <laughs> KOTOR. We're going to talk... MLB, NBA. Honestly, we're probably just going to talk KOTOR the whole rest of the show. I'm not even going to lie. It's just the KOTOR show. It's just going to be the KOTOR show. But the one (laughs) thing that I will say, listen, if you're like me and you're studying for, like, if you got finals like I do and you've been working all day and you got to do a show or whatever the hell it is that you do and you need to pick me up, you need to go to XP Coffee Company. Check out XP Coffee Company. We're going to be playing their bumper when we take our first break. It's the, it's the coffee and tea made for gamers by gamers. Jackson Law's been getting in on it. He's a big fan. Honestly, I'm planning on doing it. I, I order tea from another company. I do loose leaf um, organic mm-hmm. herbal teas. Bro, so, if they did tea, oh my gosh, it'd be it'd be game I over. I know, right? It would be game over because I would be all over that because you see I'm a big tea drinker. Oh, you mm-hmm. can't see. It. Oh, you can't see it because of the background. Anyway, oh, we see it there. Now you it's see an it. office cup. Oh yeah. <laughs> With my spirit animal, Stanley. <laughs> it's called hentai, and it's art. Yeah, you know what's funny is that when I'm on like comp- when I'm on company Zoom calls, I drink my tea like this. So when everyone's talking about stuff, it's like, huh. <laughs> I wonder what I'm trying to say here. But anyway. 
check out XP Coffee Company. Um, they're, they're the coffee that's made for gamers by gamers. And if you, if you do K-Cups, no problem. They can accommodate you. If you have the grinders and you want the bean, they can accommodate you. Check out, our, check out this bumper coming up for XP Coffee Company. Believe me, you definitely want to get in on that. And we, we come back, we will have Chad Bauman here, and we're going to be talking KOTOR. He threw down the gauntlet that he could talk KOTOR, so we decided to bring him on. Chad Bauman himself, his first appearance on the Tandemonium Sports Show. When we come back, check us out, VendettaSportsMedia.com. We'll be right back. The following is brought to you in partnership by Symbol. Symbol is a new sports marketplace where you can trade shares of professional teams like stocks. You love sports. You interested in fantasy sports without the weekly annoyance of fantasy league upkeep? Then Symbol's the app for you. With Symbol, fantasy sports is going to a whole other level. How it works is simple. You buy Symbol shares for your favorite Sim teams on the app. When your Sim team wins, you get automatic cash deposits and you don't lose any money when they lose. That's it. So if you follow trends across football, basketball, and baseball, and you think your team is a sleeper, simply invest in your favorite Sim teams on Symbol and watch your virtual portfolio prove you right or wrong. And if you want to get in on the action right away, Vendetta Sports Media's got you covered. Go to symbol.app forward slash Vendetta and use our exclusive promo code Vendetta and you'll get a $10 bonus when making your first deposit. Symbol, taking fantasy sports to a whole other level. We're back on the Tandemonium Sports Show here on Vendetta Sports Media. Make sure I said it before and I'll keep saying it until you guys do it. Go to VendettaSportsMedia.com to check out all of our content, our sports content, our gaming content, all of the content that we put on there. Especially if you're a fan of Symbol, I know I am. I know Jackson is. I know our guest Chad Bauman is. We all love Symbol. Check out our stories on Symbol. We're always putting up new stuff based on the Symbol stocks that are going on. Matter of fact, we're going to have our homeboy, um, shit, what's his name again, Jackson? I forgot his name real quick. Uh, Manning? Yeah, we're going to have Manning on here uh, next week talking some symbol stock because we're going to be getting ready to go into, um, what, the NBA is getting ready to go into their postseason. The draft is next week, right? So we're NFL definitely- draft is this week. It's Today. just Thursday. This oh, weekend. the NFL yeah, draft is this week. What the hell? Yeah. Where the yeah, hell I'm, have I been? I'm gonna be been? high on some pills live, live on the YouTube. Wow, reacting to pills. Wow, you know what? I was so I was riding high on that symbol ad, and I just came crashing down <laughs> like a thief in the night. Because that's, well, that's, you know that's, why? That's why. That's why I'm here. When people get high, I I shoot them down. Well, the pro- yeah. Well, you know the thing is though, I'm, I'm studying for my account. I'm studying for my my final in my accounting class, so my brain is goo right now. Like, so forgive yeah, me. But what we're definitely go- we're definitely gonna be talking to um to Manning next week. We're gonna talk about how the symbol stocks have changed after the draft. And that's gonna be a big deal. Like. How high, like, obviously we know that the Jaguars, um, Chad, we know the Jaguars um, stock is going to go through the roof as soon as Trevor Lawrence is announced on stage. We know that for a fact. But I want to know how your Eagles are going to do. What's your Eagles stock going to look like when they bungle this draft again? Uh, I probably won't change. I feel like people are going to expect Howie Roseman to make a terrible pick, and he's – Probably going to end up making a terrible pick. And but yeah, that's pretty par for the course. <laughs> well, welcome to your first appearance on the uh, Tandemonium Sports Show, by the way, Chad. Glad Thank to you. have I'm, you. Yeah. I am super excited to be here. I was. Yeah, it's it's come full circle now because we, Brian, you and, I, you and I have both done an episode of The Lead Word, and now Chad is here on the Tandemonium. So we're full that circle is, that now. That is true. I completely forgot, Jackson. You filled in for Trey that one time. I've actually done one two appearances. I forgot about that. I've done two appearances. Yes, Brian. Brian's been on twice. I remember, like, I remember him coming on because he was like a, a straight up guest. Jackson was like, took over for Trey. He was like, "This is my show now." <laughs> <laughs> I'm the co-host of the Lead Word now. Listen, look at mine. me. I'm letting y'all know. I'm the I can co-host do all now. this myself. Jackson Law, I could do it all. I'm Jefferson Legal up in this bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the reason why Chad came on, make, make sure you go to symbol.app forward slash vendetta. And if you do not have an account as of yet, make sure you use our promo code vendetta to get $10 bonus credit on your very first deposit on symbol. So if you don't have an account on symbol yet, you put down 40 bucks, put on vendetta in the uh, promo code, you got 50 bones. That means you can at least maybe, maybe be able to buy a share in the Chiefs, the Sim Chiefs. Who knows? Anywho, the reason why you reason why you're here, Chad, because we started talking um Kotor last week. Um, Jackson Law brought up the news from his article that a Kotor, Kotor not just reboot, not just remaster, but a straight up reimagining, much in the vein we're speculating of Final Fantasy VII is coming in 20 was it 2022 i don't think it's a specified date right now but it's in the works so let's just say let's say fourth quarter 2022 because they've been working at this now since 2019 now i gave a little bit of my kotor um shall we say caveat my my gravitas Last week, Chad, um, I bought the my first Xbox was Kotor because Kotor was bundled with um, NCAA. I think it was 04. and um, so and that I was hooked from there. Um, so, so what's your take on what's going to be going on with Kotor? What, what what's your take? What do you what do you speculate that we could see? Well, I, I think you guys are right. I don't. I don't think it's going to be just like a straight up, um, just a straight up like shot for shot, you know, re replaying of the whole thing. I think, I think it is going to be more in line with like the Final Fantasy remake, where not maybe not so much the combat is different, um, but I think maybe like, you know, updated quests and you know mission. You know, I would have. Uh, I guess quests are more like a fantasy RPG thing, but you know, Star Wars is like future fantasy. I don't know, but maybe some updated quests, you know, maybe the overall story arc is pretty much going to be the same, but you know, you just take different, maybe different routes. I know there was like the one, the, yeah, I, I, I'm actually kind of interested to see. There's a way you can skip. I forget which planet. I think it's um the Selkath planet. The one okay. with all the water. Yeah. I think there's a way, like, if you do the planets in a certain order, you can actually skip that one. And I'm actually kind of curious to see if they'll keep that in there. Because that would be a little interesting. I mean, that'd be, I mean, honestly, this is what I'd like to see. I'd like to see yeah. additional planets. I would like to see more planets. And I would actually like to see sort of a revolving kind of map where... It's not the same each playthrough. You know, things have like a different, maybe they have a different feel to them. Maybe the NPCs sort of, you know, rotate sort of differently, randomize. Maybe, you know, I mean, because here's, here's the problem that I have with certain games anymore is that the replay value, you sort of lose it. You have to really love a story and love gameplay anymore to keep coming back. Like Mass Effect, I played the hell out of Mass Effect because I wanted to do Paragon, I wanted to do Renegade, and then after I stopped doing those, I would just come back to it every now and again, but then after a while, I'd just kind of get tired of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So i definitely like to see something that'll keep you engaged and interested. Maybe have some of the stuff that you do on, like, let's just say, let's say on one planet, let's say you're on Tatooine. And you cause a hell of a ruckus on Tatooine, right? And then let's just say you go to another planet that's in the Outer Rim, and they're talking about the ruckus that you caused in Tatooine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let your choices influence the game and what happens. You know what I mean? Right, and they they yeah. do that they, to a certain effect in the original games, but it's yeah, like it's all like kind of like scripted already yeah I, I, I was i was i was gonna like more natural i think yeah right? i was gonna mention that too where it's like in, in the second one and knights of the old republic too it's more of like 
what, on a planet by planet. Yeah, if Redman was where, there, where it's where it's where it's like in the first one, it's like everything you do affects what's happening in the entire galaxy. Whereas in the second one, you're trying to you know help uh, the Republic. Kind of, you can either help or hinder the Republic uh, rebuild uh, these planets, or or you know you know you could go bad, you know hinder the Republic, and uh, you know when you, if you're going a Sith route, uh, then that's more of like a planet by planet based thing. Uh, I. It's definitely because I'm I'm also like trying to read up some more a little bit about it because there's I mean every day there's going to be new news that's that's coming out and as far as the the combat goes, um, one of the gentlemen, let me see if I can find its spot here in the article uh, again. Uh, okay, it doesn't give a name, but who, whoever's close, uh, one of the sources that's talking about this information is talking about how the new KOTOR will be an action RPG of some sort. And they specifically point towards the Final Fantasy VII remake, where it's instead of like, and, and there's a lot of similarities because this, this was just the popular game types. You know, if you look back at uh, RPGs in the early 2000s, where it's like, um, you you can assemble a small party, but then it's also kind of click turn based uh, mm -hmm. combat almost, where you're not like actively swinging and pressing a bunch of buttons. You you press a couple of buttons, and um, you know that's got the bar up at the top. Defense, so you magic. so so you could, yeah so so you could do like light attack, light attack, force power, heavy attack, stuff like that. You can you could line it all up and, and everything. Heal. But it, heal. yeah. But yeah. now it's looking like it's going to be more of like an action RPG. So more along the lines of what a Final Fantasy VII remake Star is. Or Star Ocean. Because Star Ocean. Yeah, Star and, I, and I saw one article suggesting, and I don't know how much work this would be for them, but of making the combat more like Jedi Fallen Order. And I know we kind of talked about that a little bit. I, uh, See, I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that because Jedi Fallen Order... The one thing that I like about the controls to Jedi Fallen Order, and Chad, tell me if you agree or disagree, is that it's kind of difficult to get, but once you get it, mm -hmm. you're able to, to work it, and it feels Star Wars. I, I honestly, I can't really say, because I've never actually played Jedi Fallen Order I've I've like one. I've heard of oh, it. You're booting, I've heard booting. of it. I'm booting. I'm booting you out of this discussion. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I, I've heard of it. I, I just I just never actually got the chance to play it. You've got to play sure it. That was that was on PC, right? No, it's on it's on. It was on it was on yeah it was on it's on it's on everything too. It's on everything. Oh, was it? Oh, then yeah. It's yeah, an, it's an EA title. It's it's an EA it's an EA title. It's on everything, man. I I will say this maybe. As far as like it, some things that maybe I would want from the combat, um, well, actually, they did a. There's there's two games that I think they should kind of like really model it after. That one I played recently. One is a little bit older. Uh, the first one is. Um, did you ever play the Revenge of the Sith uh, movie tie-in game? Yes, yeah. I did. Yes, I did. That game. Yeah, yeah that Banger. game. It wasn't. It it wasn't fantastic. But I just remember me, my cousins, my brothers would hook up the PlayStation and we would just we would just scrap in the duel, mm -hmm. like kicking people out of windows with Darth Vader, you know, stuff like that. That was just that was insane. But also, too, like the way they and they kind of did it a little bit with this, the newer title. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the redheaded kid from Shameless is in. I can't remember. Fallen the, Order. Fallen Fall. Order. Yeah, yeah, Jedi Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their their combat in that game was well. Yeah, I, it well, was well, pretty that, that, comparable to. Well, yeah, well, that's what I was saying. It's one of those. Well, it's not new though because that's just oh, a more refined. Did you, just, you said Fallen Order, and I was yes. thinking, What'd I was think thinking I mean? completely different game. For some reason, I even heard you say Fallen Order. I repeated yes. Fallen Order this, back this to you. This guy I'm talking about <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my brain for some reason, and this is why I asked you if it was like uh if it was on PC. It was um. Do you remember uh the like the Jedi Academy games? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, those, are those, those are great too. Those are great too. For some reason, for some reason, I heard Fallen Order. I said Fallen Order. My brain was like, "No, you idiot! He's talking about Jedi Academy." 
<laughs> well, the thing and the thing is with Fallen Order, that gameplay isn't new. That's more of a refined Force Unleashed gameplay. Well, so, yeah, it, it reminded me a lot more of like a Dark Souls ish. The way it's kind of can be slow at some points, and well, 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 uh, you well, kind of have respawning low level enemies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I said it's more of a refined. But no, I, I get I, yeah. th- there are subtle differences. I think that if the new Kotor plays like Fallen Order, I think that that can be really good because one thing, that one issue, but here's an issue that I've always had with RPGs as a whole. From Final Fantasy VII on, in every Kotor game especially, I've assembled a crew, in even Mass Effect in Dragon Age, all of them. I've assembled this whole group, right? Why are there only three or four of us? Like, what is the other? What is the other people doing? Yeah, why are we not out just curb stopping just, everybody? Just why like, aren't chilling, we working? Dude. Why aren't just we working? Straight chilling. Now, here's the thing. I get if some of them. I get if like one or two are going to stay on the ship, or stay at the camp. But why are you, you know, like? Like, why aren't the other? Why aren't the guys that aren't coming with you on a mission? Why aren't they? doing another mission like all right mass effect is different yeah you're gonna have a boarding you're gonna have a ground crew and then everyone else stays on the ship i get it and maybe that's part of the thing with um the star wars games but i would kind of like to see them and guys tell me if you agree with this maybe instead of just only having three people in an away team maybe have a fourth person you know so that way maybe you have three jedi and you have a you know a scoundrel character or um a soldier or character or the I, I am i'm 100 percent not opposed to that i'm just gonna say be, because they're changing the combat i do i absolutely do not want them to take away any of the um companions because like that was honestly like i remember playing that game as like a kid and like like you would have like karth and like basta in basta mm-hmm. in your party when you're on um when you're on what is it talos or telos Terrace. the first Terrace. Terrace, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Terrace, yeah. When you're on Terrace and like Karth would just be, or or even like Mission in in Karth, and like Karth would just be like, you'd show up and like the Sith would be like, hey, keep it moving here, and you'd be like, okay, yeah, we're going, we're going, and Karth would just be like under his breath, like, yeah, you son of a bitch, you're lucky I don't shoot you right here right now. <laughs> and that and that's something I want more. Yeah, of the too. banter's fun. I want more of the banter, and I want specific banter between specific characters, like. I love the fact how Karth and Candorous are always sort of snipping at each other. Like Candorous was just getting on everybody's nerves, and I loved it. But you know, I want yeah. more of that too. And I, but Candorous, I also, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're right. I, I interrupted you. You're fine. But I also want the NPCs to react toward certain members of the party. So like Karth, Ona- like Karth Onassi, everyone knows that Karth Onassi is a Republic soldier. So why are the Sith like, move it along, move it along, move it along. Nothing to see here. You know, like I want, conse- I, that's something else I want too. I want certain consequences to be involved of having particular people in your party. If you're on a Sith controlled planet, why would you have Bastila, who's a well-known Jedi, and Kartho Nassi, who is a well-known <laughs> Republic soldier in your group with you? Why wouldn't you have other folks with you? That way, there's a little bit more in the way of strategy. Yeah, I mean, I, for the most part, you don't really get like a Karth is obviously he's there like the whole time, but like Basila, you don't really get her until, until right before you until get until off you're of almost, the planet. Yeah, yeah, almost at the end of Terrace. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This is this is really bothering me. There's an RPG that I pro- played recently. Where you had companions and everything, and like depending on the companions you had, it changed a lot of their dialogue. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember what it is. I'm going through my Steam games right now to see if I had it on Steam, but I, it is annoying the heck out of me that, because I cannot remember it. Yeah, because now I want to know because I'm looking for different stuff to play. Because I'll tell you the truth, there's a lot what, of games. Was like, it? I don't know. What yelling at me? Oh, it was Fallout New Vegas. That's it. Oh, the, the Fallout games. Oh, well, the, well, the here's the thing with Fallout though. You don't really none of the Fallout games. You don't really have. You only have like maybe what one companion with you that you can have. 
Was it Fallout? You could you could technically have two if you have like a if you have a dog or uh fallout, like in, like in, fallout new vegas or fallout yeah new, in new vegas uh there's there's an ibot and a dog that you can get and you can have them and then another companion gotcha I'm and the same thing with fallout 3 fallout 3 i always had um dog meat and uh and fox the the huge uh super mutant that carries a uh, a laser gatlin maybe That's... it wasn't fallout i don't know i'll maybe i'll figure it out maybe i won't it may pop into me like in the middle of the night so tonight. now if so if this kotor game does well chad it's obvious we're going to get a kotor too and maybe we'll get one that's not so rushed with zero ending yeah that would be nice and by the way if they do that i am all for retconning uh the old republic that's that whole storyline was just dumb by the way like i <laughs> revan should have got his own third game or second game mm -hmm. uh, you know oh i agree 100 like, yeah the fact the fact that they just relegated it to oh 100 years later revan's still alive oh spoilers sorry by the way for anyone that might be well, that. well now well now you're going into the old yeah yeah for, for those that yeah. don't know yeah and that's like in the books and the and the old republic mmo yeah sorry, yeah Brian, because because in, yeah. in the second game revan is missing and right. The book Revan takes place before, during, and after Kotor 2. And the protagonist from Kotor 2 comes right off of that yeah. mission into the, the book. The exile goes to find him. Which, like, mm -hmm. I was like, honestly, like playing the games, like, I was cool with, like, okay, Revan's not here. We're going to go find him. That's kind of like part of this is we're trying to like get back into the forest and then go find Revan. I was cool with that. I was just, I hated, absolutely hated the direction the Old Republic just took that whole storyline. And I was just like, there's so many ways. Like, why does it have to be a billion years in the future? Why can't it just be like, we find Revan 10 years later because he told us exactly where he was going and we kind of like free him and now he's a super badass Jedi still killing you know, not killing people hopefully because he's a jedi well, but i don't i don't i don't i don't i don't trust that type of storytelling with who owns disney right now because that's literally what happened with luke skywalker he told people you get, they found a way to find him but then you know the the what is it the the last jedi happened yeah well see here's my thing i think that part of what they're going to probably do with this series i think is and I'm gonna say this real quick and then we gotta take a break. Um <clears throat> yeah, Bridget's yelling at us. Yeah. Um the old republic, it's still going strong after like 10 plus years, and they're still releasing content for it. The problem and the stories are boss, like it's just the gameplay is kind of meh for me. Like I played it for like five hours straight one day, and I haven't picked it up and played it since. And I had every intention on really playing it. I really think that what they're probably going to try to do, if they do this right, it could either change the way the, um, the Old Republic game plays. It could retcon it. But I don't think they're going to do anything really lasting because that game is it's still going so strong. Unless they choose to, you know, do something different with it and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll get some more thoughts on this when we take a break. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about this for a few more minutes, and then we're going to finish out the show. Um, we're going to give a shout out to um, the man himself, Willie Mays. He's getting some love and some recognition. Golden State Warriors are in the news as well. And we say goodbye to an integral part of the show as they move on to the sunset of life. We'll be back on the Tandem Millennium Sports Show here on Vendetta Sports Media. Once again, if you're into fantasy sports, but you don't like keeping up with the rosters week to week, go to symbol.app. Symbol, you get to buy stock in your favorite teams, and when they win, you win. You can't lose. Bottom line. Go to symbol.app forward slash vendetta, and for your very first deposit, use our promo code vendetta at checkout and you will get an extra ten dollars in credit check out these words from well yours truly talking about symbol 
And we'll be back for our final, final segment of the show. We'll be back. The following broadcast is brought to you in association by XP Coffee Company. XP Coffee Company is the fresh brewed coffee made for gamers by gamers. Get amazing flavors like Choco Loco in 8, 12, or 16 ounce bags or level up and get illusion, isolation, nightmare, or the majestic throne blends in light, medium, or dark roast in whole bean, coarse French press, drip, or fine espresso in 12 ounce, 16 ounce, or two pound bags. Wow! Shipping worldwide. If you're in the U.S., go to usa.xpcoffee.co. If you're in Europe or in the U.K., go to www.xpcoffee.co. XP Coffee Company. For gamers, by gamers. All right, we're back on the final segment of the Tandemonial Sports Show here on Vendetta Sports Media. Hey, help out your favorite Renegade Sports Network. We've got a Patreon. We've had one for a while. Go to patreon.com forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. Check out the tiers of membership. And with your monthly contribution, we can make Vendetta even better. We've got some amazing changes coming in the next few months, which includes your favorite talking head coming at you live. That's right. The Tandemonium Sports Show will be coming to you live very soon. Stay tuned for details on that. So when we have guests like Chad Bauman come on and he's running late, we can make fun of him in real time and you get to know what's going on. And then we can Mm -hmm. talk this stuff. We can take your comments live. And if you've got something off pocket to say, like for those that didn't like what Trey had to say about the Baltimore Ravens trading Lamar Jackson. You don't like it. You can say it to him live. And of course, Trey will tell you what he thinks about you live, but that's what you get when you contribute to our Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media. All right, let's finish up our KOTOR talk gentlemen. And then let's get to a last little bit of sports. If you don't mind. So This game could be along the lines of what the new Final Fantasy has been showing us. Now, the Final Fantasy is right now, the way they released it, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, because I didn't, I don't have a PS4, but you basically only played, what, the equivalent of the first disc of um, Final Fantasy VII, the original, and then now what's coming out is essentially the expansion, so you can either buy the disc that has everything on it, or you just download the expansion is that the way that works i i think you're right i actually that's the playstation is my brother's i borrow it from him sometimes i haven't gotten the chance to get around to the final fantasy remake yet but it i think you're right i think it's not they kind of did it in like as like sort of like an episode kind of thing gotcha that's that's how i understood it too now i really hope that they don't do this with kotor i I don't like I don't like the episodic, and I'll tell you why. I I would hope, I would think not, just because, I mean, Kotar was only one disc versus, like, I mean, Final Fantasy VII, if I'm remembering correctly, because I I had the original. three discs. That game was three, yeah. It was. It was was three discs, um, eight was three discs, and nine was four discs. And then six was a cartridge. Yeah. Now (laughs) now Now, the difference being is that kotor was a dvd so i'm sure that if kotor was released in cd in the cd format it'd probably be three or four discs now here's here's my thing though the episodic content thing worked for games like the walk telltale games it worked for the telltale series of the walking dead batman and back to the future blah 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 i don't want that in my rpgs i just don't i want open world rpg action that's what i want i want a non i don't want a straight up linear storytelling experience i want to be able to do like i i i I want my kotor to be kind of like my um oblivion or skyrim 
I want my primary story. And then I want a bunch of, I want so many damn side missions that I could get lost playing the side missions. Like yeah. hell, maybe, maybe I don't want to follow the route of the Jedi for a long time. Maybe I just want to wait and wait and wait and wait. And I want to be a, um, I want to be like, K- I want to go the route of Cade Skywalker and just be a bounty hunter mm-hmm. for a long time. And then I accidentally become a force user. You know, yeah. I want something like that. I don't want the straight up linear storytelling. Well, I think that was kind of like one of the cool things like with Kotar, like, cause it was like, it wasn't like a sandbox, but it was kind of like sandbox adjacent. Like it originally. tried, it tried. Yeah, really cause hard. you like, I mean, yeah, obviously you had the, the, what was like four or five different planets that you were on. Um, but ultimately like at the end of the day, like you could do the planets in whatever order you wanted. Like you could go to Corbin knock out some side missions and be like, you know what? Let me, let me slide over here over to Tatooine, you know, maybe I'll mess around and kill me a crate dragon or whatever. And then I'll slide back over to coach, you know, Corbin. Yeah. So it was, I mean, like it was kind of sandboxy, but I mean, I, I don't know if they can really like, I mean, at this point they do have like a kind of like, like a set story to tell. So maybe they have like some leeway where they could be like, you know, do whatever you want, but it's, I think it's going to be like, you know, like more, more, more linear than linear than not. Yeah. And that's just kind of on par. Like I know it's not Bioware doing this remake, but it is a Bioware designed uh, game. And and that's how all the Bioware games are. You look at Mass Effect, it's the exact same way. uh, And uh, Dragon Age is the same way where uh, as newer games came out, the, the areas expanded uh, in size, but they aren't what you would necessarily call like, same. tried and true like open world rpgs which is something that didn't really start to take form until uh the elder scrolls like morrowind came out uh and then that picked up steam with oblivion and then you had fallout and skyrim come out and stuff like that um so i would imagine that it's it's going to be similar because even even uh uh jedi fallen order was like that where uh you had uh multiple paths uh, that led you around. It was semi open world ish, but still kind of on a rails type of yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Oh, oh, but well, but Fall, but Fallen but, Order but, was very linear. Like I th- that was my only issue with Fallen Order, besides having no yeah no Kotor Kotor linear. will be much more open. It, it it's kind of like that if there was if there's middle ground in between something like an Elder Scrolls game and then Jedi Fallen Order. KOTOR is that middle ground, which is basically what Mass Effect and Dragon Age are, where there's some exploration, there's some side questing, but areas aren't necessarily as big and and open, and you can just go everywhere and do anything, and there's a hundred different ways to get to a single location. Yeah. And like like Jackson said, too, like even with like Fallen Order, like, Fallen Order wasn't so much as like what Brian said, where like you could you had like side quests on side quests on side quests. It was more like, hey, you're this dude just kind of like out in space. And you got explore all you want. Yeah, explore all you want. But when it's time to go to work, it's time to go to work. That's kind of like mm-hmm. how yeah. uh, you know Fallen Order was. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll see what it is. At the end of the day, they're gonna get my money for it, regardless. Yes, they're they're gonna have my money for it. Um, but no, well, we'll see what's what. It's, it's an exciting time to be a gamer. It really is. Yeah. And I'm actually glad that we have this to talk about. Otherwise, this would have been the shortest show in the history of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So, um, let's shift. Apparently, the Golden State Warriors are going to be the first pro team to launch an NFT collection. Now, NFT, for what I understand, that's basically cryptocurrency. Um, cryptocurrency is getting very it's really starting to pick up steam over the last five to ten years like i actually have some stock over on robin hood and was it dogecoin dogcoin dogecoin yeah dogecoin yeah i got i got out of doge i got out of bitcoin and went to doge yeah the only reason why i'm still on um robin hood is because i don't have enough money to get myself out of robin apparently you have to have almost 200 dollars in your portfolio to completely close your robin hood so it's like it's crazy. Yeah, a- Anthony has been the Dogecoin guy 
with Vendetta. The man, the man has like shown his portfolio. Man, man has made an insane amount of money off of Doge, and he keeps doubling down too, and he keeps making more money. See, how do I do that? What? Like, I don't know how to. I don't know how to make money using. Uh, it's just his portfolio has has grown. So it's like his portfolio is worth a lot of money. And yeah, the reason why his the reason why his jumped up so much is because he bought like eleven thousand Doge coin when it was like three wow. cents. Wow. And then obviously then it like the highest it's gotten to is like forty two cents. It's like down it's calmed down, it's back down. It's still worth a, over a quarter now, I think. And I don't know how much I have in it, but I made a dollar twenty nine today. Yeah. And and personally I, I really don't understand what the what the rage is about NFTs. Like I don't get why they go for as much as they do. And and it's something that's it's like, you know, the top shot craze that happened like a month ago where everybody was trying to get into top shot. Mm-hmm. It's you own a video that it's trademarked by top shot or whatever, and you just you own it. Like that's the thing. It's it's no different than a card, I guess, and that's where the value comes in. Where it's like if you are if you collect baseball cards or something like that, and you get like a rare, you know, autographed rookie Mike Trout card or something like that, um, with like a piece of his jersey, a game worn jersey on it. You know, they've got weird, they've got insane stuff like that, and it costs a lot of money to get into. But if you get something like that, then I guess your investment's paid off. But I, yeah. I, I guess maybe that's the draw of it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, I don't know. I'll, I'll stick to scratchers. You know, just give me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me yeah. number twenty-two and a twenty-five. <laughs> like that's there you go. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's I feel it's it's like the same thing the way I look at it. Like I don't like, I don't understand either one, but I'll I'll take it if I win. Yeah, like Dogecoin right now is worth like twenty-seven cents a share. So if I were to add twenty five dollars to my portfolio right now, I could buy ninety one shares of it. But like, I don't know how much of it I have currently. Oh yeah, my wife and I we got a couple thousand of it. Wow. How are and you then, doing? oh, how, we're how, doing great. We're we're like maybe three or four hundred bucks in the green. Oh okay. I'm a dollar twenty two in the green. My man. Yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. See. Hey. Oh. You gotta 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 See? hang on to it so that way when it explodes like Bitcoin and it's worth like 20, 30 grand per doge, that's Dude. that's when we're that's when we're all driving Lamborghinis. I ain't driving no uh, damn yeah, Lamborghini. I don't, I don't, nah, I don't I'm, I'm gonna stick to my, I'm gonna stick y'all. to my Nissan. I'm gonna stick to my Nissan. <laughs> thanks. No, you know, you know, you know what I'm gonna do if that happens. I will like sit there, sit on the money and put money. See, I'm practical. I'll put money into a 529 plan for my kid and be like, now go to college on dad's dime. I'll, I'll put it in a Swiss account so it can't be taxed. There you go. So good, good for the, um, good for the golden state warriors getting an NFT thing going on. Good for them. You know, the, the, you know, the, this just goes to show once again, also that, yo, basketball, they're, they're going to overtake the NFL as the top sport in North America within a decade. Just you wait and see, man, because they're doing all kinds of stuff that is just really progressive both socially and financially well to be fair there was actually one of the seahawks players i think got paid in like bitcoin wow that's crazy so his entire contract is in bitcoin not not like the whole thing but like i think he had like a percentage of it where they Mm -hmm. like put gave him like okay here's your game check the rest of it is in like your Bitcoin account. I can't remember who it was. I know Trey would know it off, but I don't know. I don't I know. His name I know Trevor it. Lawrence. He, he, Trevor Lawrence signed a uh, a contract. It's like an endorsement deal, and he's getting paid in Bitcoin. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was like the left tackle for Seattle. You may be right. Gotcha. You're right. Uh, the re- I, honestly, I believe the reason why Dogecoin had such a huge jump is because Mark Cuban said that the Mavericks were going to accept it as legitimate currency for buying tickets and merchandise. Wow. And he announced that like back in February. And since, the, since then it was like before Dogecoin had its massive jump from like 
less than 10 cents to over a quarter now. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that they had massed like almost like 200, 300K in Dogecoin uh, for, you know, t in ticket sales and merchandise sales. So Mark Cuban is going to be the richest man in the, in the world one of these days. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. One thing about Mark Cuban, he's a, he is a, he is a very, very, very smart man. And I'll tell you the truth, man. He he's Mark Cuban is definitely going to um he, he's a trendsetter in a lot of ways with again social social stances and so forth. So I mean, granted, I'm not that big of a fan of him and his show Shark Tank because they tried to um screw over my, my man Diamond Dallas Page, but I can forgive him. <laughs> All right, so let's shift over to MLB before we um, close out. Um, article written by Milo Coulter. Um, your vendetta. Um, give a shout out to uh, Say Hey Willie Mays earning the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, courtesy of uh, Baseball Digest. Oh, man. What can be said about Say Hey Willie Mays? 660 career home runs, making him sixth all time. 24 all-star game appearances, 3,283 career hits, two MVPs, 12-time Golden Glove winner, and the only player in MLB history to hit 50 home runs and 20 triples in a single season. The majority of his career with the New York slash San Francisco Giants from 51 to 72. Um, but he's also done so much off the field. Look up a lot of the stuff that Willie Mays has done as far as charity, business, social work. I mean, he's one of the greats of all time, and it's about time that he gets the recognition that he deserves. Absolutely. Love, love me some Willie Mays. I love the fact that people still, and folks don't even realize it, but a lot of like the, the sort of the basket catches, the, um, sort of like those easy catches that outfielders are making. That's Willie Mays right there. Guys weren't doing that before Willie Mays. And um, real quick, um, Nick Aprea is talking, saying that um, A-Rod thinks that the MLB lacks emotion. Now, here's my thing about Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean, but the, the players may be lacking emotion, but when you're putting your best foot forward on the, on the, in the park day in, day out, but your league isn't promoting you like the other professional sports are being promoted. I'm going to just go through the motions too. I'm still getting paid. It's all guaranteed. Why am I going to try to be a larger than life persona? If you're not even trying to put me out there. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll agree with that. One thing about Willie Mays, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, everyone who's ever done anything Vendetta-related knows I really, outside of, like, going to, like, Phillies games, I don't really watch baseball. I don't really follow it. I know pretty much nothing about it except for, you know, there's strikes, balls, home runs, that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, but I will say this. As far as, like, players are concerned, like, even I know who Willie Mays is. So, like, if I know who he is, that should tell you, like, you know, he's a pretty big deal. Um, so I wanted to say that. But in regards to baseball, too, I don't think it's not – you're right, Brian, where, like, they don't do enough promoting. Like, I remember, like, a couple – like, either last year or like, the year before, you know, baseball, like, had their, their opening day, like, in Tokyo or something about it. And, like, nobody knew about it. Like, not even Trey, who's, like, <laughs> all over baseball. Like, he, I remember we even talked about it on the lead word. He was like, I had no idea this happened. Like they 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 don't promote like any of their big guys. Like Mike Trout should be everywhere. Yeah, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be able to walk three feet without seeing some kind of Mike Trout promotion or or billboard or something. But you mm -hmm. don't ever you don't see him anywhere. Yeah. You don't you know the Bryce Harper got paid all the money he got paid outside of like the Phillies. You know promoting Bryce Harper. You don't see anything from Major League Baseball. So yes, they're they're they're. They're like, you know, in their own way to a certain extent. But I also think it's just like, and I, I talk about this all the time, especially in the Slack. I obviously don't write articles about it because I don't care enough about baseball to do it. But <laughs> um, 
like all of the stupid unwritten rules in baseball. Like, I think that leads to it too, because like, like the, one of the biggest like controversies is bat flips. Like, Oh, I hit a Why home is run. That even a I, big deal? Right. That, that is my point. Exactly. Like I hit a home run. I I'm happy. I hit a home run. I smile. The next time I'm at bat, the pitcher's throwing 90 miles at my head. Why? That, and I've used this example before. That would be like if I was wrestling a kid in high school and college, he takes me down in the first period. At the start of the second period, I just upper, upper, uppercut him. Like, that is not okay. I agree. Like, seriously, if you're mad that this guy hit a home run off you, maybe be better. Don't, yeah. Don't throw, him, don't throw yeah. a meatball. Don't throw a meatball for the guy to crush. Yeah. Yeah, or better hit, control. Yeah, or you know what? If this guy, if you and this guy have – that's something else we don't have in baseball anymore. We don't have like rivalries that mean something. I don't just mean like, you know, Phillies, Mets, and blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Like per- personal, that's rivalries. Like personal rivalries. Like Pedro Martinez versus all the Yankees. I mean, yeah, come on. I don't, that, that's baseball, but it's also every sport too. Like, that's I mean, true. Everybody I, is like, I, everyone worry, is worried about brand and we're all buddies and, and I mean, I'm cool with that. You should have some professionalism, some camaraderie. But you know what, man? Even in professional wrestling, man, you got guys that it's compelling. I'm sorry, yeah. the Drew Drew McIntyre that the, the, that that sh- the Drew McIntyre Bobby Lashley um, program right now is compelling. Yeah. Plus, I'm, I'm just a Bobby Lashley fan. I mean, I, I would take it back. I haven't watched wrestling in a, in a very long time. Oh, me but either. I would take I, it back. I will to, watch, but I will watch WrestleMania. And I, yeah, like Bobby I, I will take it. I will take it back to like, to like my like grow like my childhood and say that I I genuinely thought like The Rock and Stone Cold hated each other. Like it was a shock. Like you would see them like 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 you know a- after they like kind of retired, you'd see them like oh like hugging and shaking hands and stuff we're like hey hey you you do not like each other don't try to <laughs> trick me yeah it's weird now for me to hear the undertaker talk like a regular dude <laughs> because undertaker was the last guy that protected kayfabe kayfabe being the sort of for those that don't know the the the, the spectacle that is professional wrestling kayfabe yeah. is that veil of protection he was the last guy that really did it now that he's retired no one else does it. so yeah. All right, yeah. guys. Uh, what, I'm just, go, go ahead, oh, just just to interject real quickly to talk about what Alex Rodriguez says. Like, I, I tend to like my biggest gripe with baseball right now, and it's something that I don't understand. And it's something that I see a lot more. And um, hearing people close to the game talk about it is like Alex Rodriguez says, the way that it's you're taught to play, like the way you're taught to hit. Now, there's everyone walks up there. All nine batters walk up there trying to crank it. You don't have people that try to play situational baseball. You know, if you got a guy on second, you know, you're, you know, a good strategy to at least advance him or maybe give him a chance, uh, you know, to score is you hit behind him. So you wait on a pitch, try to hit it to right field, you know, or, you know, hit it oppo, you know, or if you're a left-handed batter to try to get ahead of it, pull it to right field. So that way he's got time hit and runs. There's no situational play anymore. You go up there, and you try You're to hit to it, it as hard as you can. And there's no shame in striking out anymore. There's yeah. absolutely no shame of it whatsoever. When I played baseball, if I struck out, I was embarrassed. And it's like, it's good to have the attitude to shake it off and be like, I'll get it next time. But you should no, not be no, okay no with having the most strikeouts in the league. You, you should not be okay with walking out to bat four times a game and striking out three of those at bats. Right. Okay. That's bad. All right. It's very bad. You should not be okay with your what, batting average being barely 250. No, because because if if I struck out the next at bat, I'm just thinking I just got to make contact. I got to put I got to at least put the ball in play. That was embarrassing. If I'm going to get out, I I, it, it, I at better least be let me running hit it down first. It, at least let me hit the ball. Let me make contact and make someone make a play. Force you know force them to do something and, and not you, me just stand there looking or swinging for the fences trying to crank it. Right. And if you went down by three straight strikes, oh, that's the worst. At least if, and then if you're going to strike out, at least strike out where it's like two and two and you've been fouling it off and you've made the picture have to pitch eight, nine, 
10 times to you so you can start wearing him down for the guy behind you. Now it's just yeah, there's just there's there's just no situational it. baseball anymore. And it, it's it's weird to me because like I, I, I know that guys that have really followed the game can see it, but from someone like me that hasn't really watched religiously major league baseball in over 10 years and then picking it back up again and really trying to watch it, I can clearly see that stuff too. Cause I'm of the classic guy too, where it's like how many pitchers do you see going full games now? Like how yeah, many very rare. how many complete games? You know, how many pitchers in the league can a- actually have the stamina to go nine innings, to throw over a hundred pitches? And like I get the idea that they want to try to cut down on that because there's a lot of injuries that happen to it. A lot of great pitchers have short careers because they were a part of that classic part of a group of pitchers that could do that. But that's awesome. It, that used to be like a if you were a good oh, I pitcher, love seeing, if I you love could go nine CG innings, if, you could, if you could go a complete game, giving up only one or two runs, you were one of the top 10, 15 pitchers in the league. Now, now hardly anybody can do it. You're lucky because, to get past the seven. Because well, it's because and I and I kind of agree with Rodriguez here, where he talks about you just go up there, you throw the ball as hard as you can. For six innings, you you play enough innings to get the win, and then you use up the bullpen completely for the rest of the game. You can roll out a new pitcher every day. You roll out a new pitcher because this guy sucks at hitting lefties. Doesn't matter if the right-handed pitcher is on fire, and this all goes into the analytics thing that I absolutely hate. That's ruined baseball. That's starting to ruin other sports where – Oh, this guy hits terrible against the lefty. Well, it doesn't matter that this righty's been in there for three innings and he's only given up one hit and has struck out four guys and is on fire. We're gonna pull him for a lefty that's just been thrown in a in the pin, and then he runs out there warmed up but cold when it comes to game time, and then that dude cranks it. Even though the analytics say that guy has tr- uh, struggles hitting against lefties, it could be the one time that the ball is cranked out of the park because that guy gets a good hit on a lefty. No, you're not wrong. You're you're not wrong, Jackson. You're you're, you're not wrong. And I think I, I honestly, I, I really wanted to get back into baseball because I'm like you. I haven't religiously been dealing with baseball in at least 10, 15 years. And I just have no desire because the sport's just not the same anymore. I, I miss the days where I could see CG in someone's box score. And, you know, I, I miss those days. It, it's over. It's gone. All right. We're, we're about running out of time. 12 rounds. Come on. <laughs> Folks, we say goodbye to Ms. Bridget. 12 rounds. She's going to be graduating in a few weeks. And she is intelligently going to be taking the time to travel before she gets responsibilities like work and, and significant others and all that. And she needs to stay away from that crap too. <laughs> Focus on making that coin, girl. Focus on making your coin. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Matter of fact. Got to take care of your chicken. That's yeah. <laughs> right. You know what? You do like my mama did. She, when she met my father, she already owned her own home, had her whole everything. And when my father expected to be put on the deed, tells my mom that was obviously an oversight on your point. She said, nah, this is my house. You want a house where both our name is on the deed? You need to get me. This is my starter. You need to get me in my forever home. And then both of our names will be on the deed. That's the attitude you need to take. So yeah, you definitely, definitely take your time to travel. You you have done so amazing on this show. You have helped Jackson and I to be able to have some sort of organization to this, this thing that we do every week. So I personally want to thank you for all the hard work you've done with all of the notes that you come up with. And your, your, your replacement's got some, she's, she's got shoes to fill. Because you, you are definitely leaving an impression on the uh, the lore and mythos of the Tanimonium Sports Show. Oh, thank you. The, you know, the I thank you is, oh, I was going to say the thank you is extended over here too. Because you, all you do for us with the lead word, I, I got to pass off editing and posting over to Bridget. And it was like, I have free time now. 
<laughs> hopefully that doesn't go away with your replacement, but yeah, I hope not too, but you know what? But, um, C- C- Courtney's awesome. She, she filled in for Bridget once when Bridget had some um, stuff to take care of and she did an amazing job. And I'm sure that, um, that the groundwork that Bridget has laid is going to definitely continue on and, Doors open for you anytime that you ever want to come back. I don't see why you would want to, to be honest. You do your world traveling, and then you go out west and you make your mark. And and then we here at Vendetta can say, yeah, she started with us. <laughs> so, oh, Well, thank you, guys. You know, I really enjoyed working here so much, and I really learned a lot. And it was so amazing meeting you guys and getting to, you know, learn the ins and outs of podcasting and videoing and all that stuff. So it was great. Bridget now knows how to do audio editing and upload stuff to anchor better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yeah, she, you know, she, she's the one that's writing up the descriptions and whatnot. Literally all I do is throw the video together. I throw the video together. Bridget does the rest. <laughs> so Yeah. Whatever skills that you've picked up from us, I hope that they serve you well and, and improve on those skills so you make me look like a bigger idiot than I already do. You do you. you. The whole point of you doing this is so just for you to lay the groundwork and get better. And I look forward to seeing everything you do and as you excel. So, Thank you. <laughs> so with that being said, folks, yeah. we are out. The draft is in well, tomorrow for when you guys get this, Bridget only has Bridget has one more day of work left, <laughs> but tomorrow is the draft for you guys. So next week we're going to have our man Manning in here. We're going to be talking. I mean, God, Jackson and I are going to be talking about the draft, the controversies, all the craziness that's going on. And then Cameron's going to come in and then we're going to talk about how the draft has changed the symbol stocks. It's going to be huge it's going to be big so make sure you join us next week here on vendetta sports media vendetta sports media.com or the vendetta sports media youtube page youtube on um, channel just make sure you click that bell icon and make sure you either click that you want all or some notifications just get all because we always have new stuff coming up on youtube always have new stuff on the website and make sure you check us out on all social media uh what is it at Media Vendetta over on the Twitter, Vendetta Sports Media over at Facebook, Vendetta Sports Media on Instagram, on Trey's Train. We're all over the place, baby. All over the place. Make sure you check us out, vendettasportsmedia.com, patreon.com forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. We'll see you guys next week. As soon as I hit stop.